For today's lesson, I'm going to be walking you through how to paint a lemon slice using watercolors. Um, to get started, check out the video description below for a list of everything you'll need for this video. And be sure to hit subscribe if you want to watch other videos just like this one. All right, so let's get started. So first off, you want to draw a circle. You can take up most of the page with the circle because this is the full shape that we're going to be drawing. You can use a cup or any circular object you have if you want it to be perfect, but lemons aren't perfect, so it's okay if it's not an exact circle. And then about half an inch within that circle, you can draw a very light other circle. So you want to keep this one very light because we're actually going to be sectioning it off and we want to make sure those pencil lines can be easily erased after. So now we have a bigger circle and a smaller circle. And then we're going to create little wedges. So we're going to have a small circle in the middle and from that circle the wedges are going to break off. So we're going to draw one and then we'll leave a hairline between each one. And you want them to be a little bit wavy. They're not perfect. Just like the slices on a lemon wedge, they're not going to be all exactly the same size and that's totally okay. Some can be a little wider. Some can be a little narrower. You just keep making your way around until you get back to the beginning. So I'll make this two separate ones. And like I said, we're going to be wanting to erase these pencil lines after, but it's not important to erase them right at the beginning. We can erase them once it's fully dry. One quick tip is that with watercolor, you can actually erase through the color after it's dried. All right, so we're going to want to use the two yellows for the lemon. So I'm going to use a really bright yellow as well as a yellow ochre. And I'm going to start on the left hand top side. And basically what you want to do is add your clear water first. Add a sheen of clear water within it. And then take your yellow, your bright yellow, and just sort of outline outline the lemon wedge. So that's what you're trying to do. And then I'm going to take a tiny bit of yellow ochre and I'm just going to drop it in a little bit to create a little bit of variation on this lemon wedge. And then I just keep working my way around. So just keeping a thin white line between each one. And feel free to pause it at any point if you need to catch up but I'm basically following the same pattern the whole way. You want to make sure that you don't have too much water on the page. So sometimes I use my brush, a dry brush, to pick up a little bit of the water if I add too much. Not only does having too much water take a long time to dry, but I find it doesn't allow the paint to bleed in the right way. So when it moves its way around, if the page is too wet, it ends up bleeding all the way through and being one color. And I really want to see that variation of yellow. So that's why I'm not adding too much water to each wedge. And you'll know you have the right amount if there's no bubbles of water on the page. You should only just see a sheen of water on the page versus actual bubbles.
And the brighter the yellow you have for this, the better. I'm using a nickel azo yellow. It's quite a bright yellow. There's some that are even brighter. Yellow ochre adds a nice touch. And almost every paint set comes with a yellow ochre. And the last little section here. So if there's anything else you want me to paint, be sure to leave a note in the comments. I'm always looking for new fresh ideas, inspiration, things that you guys enjoy and want to see me teach you. love to hear from you guys and be sure if you're having fun following along be sure to hit the like button down below I really appreciate you guys' likes you guys' comments all right so then we're just going to outline the lemon here and so we add a line of clear water all the way around and you want it to be a fairly thin layer of water so you don't want it to be like a pool all the way around just a thin sheen and what will happen is it allows to create that gradient. So it'll be a light yellow to a, or sorry, a dark yellow, and it'll move to a lighter yellow. And you got to be careful not to touch the lemon wedges. Because if you do, it'll pick them up and lead into the outside. So first things first, I'm going to take that same bright yellow, and I'm going to color all the way around. So follow the outline. And that'll bleed in as it dries. And then I'm going to take a fairly dark amount of the yellow ochre and I'm just going to go all the way around again. But this time I'm gonna leave a few little spaces in between. So I'll outline it, but there's gonna be some spots where I don't have it. And that just creates that variation that kind of naturally occurs in nature where it's not perfectly symmetrical. Just make my way back to the beginning. And then just to make things a little more fun, we're gonna use a wide brush. This one I have here is um, the Winsor Newton Cotman uh, six millimeter. And what I do is I get the brush really wet and then I put quite a bit of paint on the brush and make sure it's nice and wet because it'll let go of the paint easier. And then I just add some splatters. And if you add them while it's still wet, they'll move around within the painting as well. So you'll have some that bleed and then some that are solid lines. So now that I've gone all the way over and I've covered in all my bases, what I want to do is take a little bit of the bright yellow and just add a tiny bit more in the places that are wet. So if you see a wet corner there, just add a little more yellow and it'll bleed just until it gets dry. So that creates a little bit of variation and that gets some of that, um, you'll notice there's uh, ridges and lines in the, and texture in it and that's just from putting down more color when it's already partially dry, that creates some of those blossoming effects that you see in watercolor. And it also just ensures that the painting is going to be nice and bright. So that's it. Now I'll just sign it. I'm going to use red to sign it. It'll stand out nice. So like I said before, be sure to hit subscribe if you want to watch other videos just like this one and hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed painting along with me. Thank you for watching.